lose 5-2 to the Buffalo Sabres. Uh, just to go over what Din said before we started this, uh, we suck. Um, and we're going to be discussing that topic mostly today. So why do you we say can, we suck? We can suck way too often. And it, it, it's out of nowhere. Actually, no, it's not. It's not really out of nowhere. But, like, we can just suck. Like, there's no consistency, which maybe that's hockey in general, right? Like, once again, I'm sure there's other teams that uh, have this exact same problem. I hope, I'm hope i sure that there's t- the teams that we, we just don't notice do these things, right? I'm pretty sure Tampa and Florida both lost to Buffalo. I mean, we did it, like, twice in a week, which is, like, fucking really cool. Like, I think Colorado's lost really the awesome. series to Arizona, too. Nice. Yeah. That's really impressive as well. Yeah. Except, like, <laughs> but the problem is we suck. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so do you think we sucked that game? The thing is, even if we played well, deserve a win meet or whatever the hell it is, we lost two, 5-2 against the Buffalo Sabres. And the Buffalo Sabres suck, and we're really good. So... Yeah, I don't know. I found that game, uh, and we can talk uh, talk about Peter Morazic, um, but there's – it's like at the start of the season when we just had no puck luck. Uh, and other than, like, like you can't really say anything else Matthews does is, is puck luck, but, like, Mikheyev had, like, three two-on-ones. Marner passing on a two-on-one when the, the defenseman gave him a breakaway, essentially. I, and who was he with? Who was he with there? Comp? Yeah, comp. Oh, dude, it's on Austin. I Austin's know. not there. I know. It's and you could just tell that the defenseman was like, okay, you're not going to shoot. I'm just going to go right yeah. over to this other guy. But it's just like we had good chances. The difference was 85-year-old Craig Anderson played better than Peter Morazic. And yeah. that's what a lot of the last few games that we've lost has come down to. Um, is just the fact that, well, either refereeing, which we can get to as well, but just like our goalie play has just been like you can only know do so much. Goals, want to know, you know our goals I, against it? Do you so want to know? Let our goals me make one, one our, point. One you point. can make it whatever point you want, buddy. It's your podcast. Go for it. <laughs> it's, um, it's like if you put a pitcher in and the pitcher lets up seven runs. I don't care how good the rest of your team is. You're not going to win very many games if your pitching sucks. If a pitcher you know? keeps doing that, they don't get to play anymore or they don't get to play in important games anymore. Right. And that's what it should be. And that's why I, my, my little conspiracy thing is like, this was Mirazik's last chance. Yeah. That, I, that's what it was. Right. Yeah. Cause it's also, if, if he played on real, I don't know. I'm sure it's something about this game, the heritage classic game that would probably boost his confidence more than like a regular game would. Mm-hmm. right and this show this game is such a like you're the guy kind of choice right like if you get picked for this game you're still a guy which Mrazic shouldn't not think he's the guy when Eric Calgren plays fucking two good periods but like it's not that he, he he's not anything yeah right yeah he's not he, going to be on this team very much longer well I hope so and I, and I honestly think even if it means putting him on waiver it's just to get rid of him and like another team will probably pick him up because they think that like he's a good, he's a fine goalie, you know? And like, he has like a nine Oh eight or something save career save percentage, which is fine. Yeah. It's whatever. Um, this year he has worse than Ray Croft and Vesa Tosca on the Leafs. And it's just like, I'm sure another team could be like, wow, this is a serviceable guy we have under yeah. contract for the next few years. Um, and you just get him off the team because it's not like, I also feel like I'm p- trying to put myself in that situation. And like, if you knew that all the fans and like even your teammates probably didn't really believe in you that much, it would be hard to get back into that mind space. And sometimes a fresh start might be all you need, you know, yeah. like look at Freddie. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I, I think that that Lee Dubas now is starting to acknowledge that we do need a goaltender. And what I was saying in the chat is like, I don't think we need to go after Marc-Andre Fleury. I think we go after a guy like Anthony Stollers or like someone who's like, serviceable what Morazic should have been because you still probably want Jack Campbell to see if he re- regain it for the playoffs right mm-hmm. yeah well at thoughts? this point uh Jack has to be your technical guy still yeah right we just need we need what Morazic was supposed to be yeah yeah and people floated Yaroslav Halak as well and he's had a terrible year and it's just like I know I don't really – you don't have a lot of games to see if that's going to work. 
No, exactly. Uh, uh, so Tom Brady just tweeted something. What did he say? Mrazic sucks? These past few months, I've realized my place is still on the field and not in the stands. That time will come, but it's not now. I love my teammates and I love my sport family. They make it all possible. I'm coming back for my 23rd season in Tampa. Let's fucking oh, go. Oh, man. <laughs> Put him in net for the Leafs. Give him, yeah. give him some reps in that. <laughs> uh, wow. Okay. Well, who? I mean, we all kind of knew. We all knew. At least he's not back. going. At least he's not going to San Fran. That's all. I, I thought say. he was going to come back eight games in the season, right? Yeah. Have himself a little, little, little bit of a retirement, but yeah. Guess not. Interesting. Uh, let's get back to how shit the Leafs are. So, um, awesome. Like that. Our top line is just absolutely unbelievable. Our third line is the best third line that I can really remember on the Leafs. Mm-hmm. I'm sure there has been one, like when we made to the conference finals, like the Sundin era and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But like, s- since we can remember when was the last time we actually, like they were playing against granted it's Buffalo's top line, but like they spent more time in the opposing end yep. and Angvo and Mikheyev have chances to break any time. They just need to learn how to score. But like, you kind of, you know, I like uh, Angvo on that line too, more than Kasha. Because if that third line can still be, because that third line, I don't know which way you slice it, isn't going to score much. Yeah. So don't waste cash on that line in a way, mm-hmm. right? If it's going to be the nothing happens line, I'd want to use as many, uh, not something happens guys on that line. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It, right. No one thinks they're going to score. <laughs> but that means Kasha and Kerfoot both get to play on other lines and they have probably more of a scoring threat. So, with who we have now, because I don't think I think now that goaltending is need and defense is probably a need, that's where we're going to go in the deadline. We're not yeah. going to get it forward. So, what is your ideal lines um, if the playoffs were to start tomorrow? Like forward for forward group, uh, like exactly what they did today. Exactly what they did today, basically. So, yeah. Except, so, except, well, except you know my opinion on Simmons. Do you switch uh, Robertson and Simmons even yeah. in a playoff series when you need? Oh, well, that, what more. do you need, though? A bit more what? He's not going to do anything. <laughs> well, even the like, fact that after Matthews... Have you seen him happened. do anything in the last 10 games? No. He no. he is just like, you got to, like, you're and I rooting think, I for think him? He, I think Keith's telling him not to. All right, with a minute and a half, I know it's a bad look because you got a bunch of families at the game and stuff. But, like, I don't care. Yeah. Yeah, I don't... I don't no, he like Simmons' seems kids like, were probably there too, right? Like, yeah. I, I, as I was like saying in the group chat a couple of days ago, it feels like Simmons is like the guy in house league that can't skate very well, and everyone's just like, "Hey, we got," especially with the thousandth yeah. game and stuff. It's like, "Hey, we got to like get this guy a goal," and he just like stand in front of that buddy, like, "We'll get it to you." Yeah, we got, he's, we got you. <laughs> and he seems like that. He could be the thirteenth forward. Player. Yeah, because because you do want him for like locker room and stuff like that. Yeah, and, I, I, no, hundred percent. And yeah, like maybe he plays every three games. It also gives Spets a little bit of rest, right? And if Robertson has like a really bad game, you just sit him. That's the thing, though, is like you noticed Robertson play really well when he was in a top six role. When he was in yeah. a bottom, granted, he was only playing like seven minutes, but like um, that would mean that Kasha, Kerfoot, and Spezza and would be your fourth line. And Does that sound like a problem. No, but the issue is in the playoffs, benches typically get shorter. Um, and I don't know how, like, that seems like three, like uh, the Matthews line is obviously just levels yeah. above, but like three yeah. lines, which are all like relatively like decent, you know? And yeah. like, isn't that what we want? Is it? I don't know. We think about how much secondary or how much primary score, I guess all we got was secondary scoring in the playoffs at last year, but yeah. I, the thing is, these don't fucking matter. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't think we're getting a top six forward anymore. We might, no. right? Obviously, it's going to be one of those things that if it's a good deal, Dubis will do it. If it's not, like, he's not overpaying for top six winger. He could overpay for a defenseman. You might have to overpay for a goalie, but like, I, I just don't think he's fucking. I think, like, the Anthony Stolar's idea, I don't really know who he is, other than I think he played in, like, Minnesota at one point. But I don't see him going for, like, a very serviceable goalie. Yeah. So, I, I don't think Flurry, especially if you want no. to get a defenseman, I don't think that that's a attainable thing. I also don't know if he'd even waive his no his, no trade know. and a seven million dollar cap hit when it looks like Muzzin is going to come back. Also, also trade to potentially not be.
be the starter because what are you telling jock then yeah no exactly right like i yeah you do you do you trade for what mrazic was supposed to be yeah <laughs> yeah or right. i mean you give calgar in a couple games and see if the guy's got anything but you can't ride a, like a call grin into the playoffs. No, but I mean, Campbell will be back. The hope is ju- two weeks. The thing is, if Jack can have a fucking nine fifteen, who cares? Yeah, right? exactly. Like, all we need is a fucking nine fifteen. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and that's his career. I mean, I still have more, way more faith in Jack than I do in Morazic because. No, no, there's no like, there's no. You can't even use the word faith for Morazic. He can't play net. Yeah, he's all like even at the start of the game, he was jumping all around the crease. Yeah. That goal, this is so Mark, who uh we'll have on the podcast tomorrow, but like uh he was saying like it wasn't necessarily Mirazic's fault. And like granted, he made some saves, but like that's what you're supposed to do as a goalie. You're and a then goalie. if it's two two in the third in a heritage classic game, you're playing for your leafs to still play on the leafs, and you don't put your skate next to the post, which is a fundamental goalie move, and they shoot from the corner and it goes in and he he saw it too that would like yeah. like he saw it like he saw enough of it open that he went fuck all right cheers yeah. if you're gonna give me this see ya yeah that's your fault you know like yeah. and then even at first i was like oh that shouldn't as the fourth goal i was like oh that shouldn't count um but then as i looked more at it they were playing more replays it's like no he pushed the net off yeah, and i hate off. when other goalies do it and yeah. so it's like but then he wasn't in position to make the actual save after no. so if you spent more time just staying in position you would have saved a shot that was right at his chest, you know, and um, just uh, not good enough, not good enough, <laughs> especially when the team puts up a halfway decent effort in front of you. And um, like our defense is not great. It's, it's league average, which like without a Muzzin who has the potential to be a top three defenseman still. Yeah. You know, it's, like, it's 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 literally it's pretty it's go get yourself a fucking defenseman, top four defenseman, go get yourself a backup goal, like a backup goalie, and you're done. Yeah. And do I think that's enough to win the cup? I don't know, but like at least you cups like, a crap shoot, man. Yeah, yeah, I know. And like, <laughs> no, and like I think you know what? I would think completely different if Mrazic and Campbell, or sorry, yeah, Mrazic and Campbell played to a 915. Yeah. I would say go get Thomas Hurdle. I would go say get Geo. Would be Chicken. first place. Yeah. Oh, for sure, hundred percent. Like yeah. a million percent. Yeah. Like it wouldn't be close, actually. I think. Yeah, we'd probably be a few games. We should, uh, goals holy up. Shit, we um, should, we'd have at least what we'd have ten more points. Yeah. Right. I know. We'd be challenging the Avalanche for. Yo, our, I'm pretty week. sure. Like we don't have a. I know we don't have another month other than December above a or November above a 900 save percentage. But I think the second highest average is like eight nine two. Yeah. Like that's bad. <laughs> yeah. I would I wonder if there's a stat out there that would show like um opportunities given up to know like what the discrepancy between the terrible save percentage and like do we actually give up more bad chances than other teams? You know? Like Might, maybe a maybe a bit, but like when you watch Mraz, I think it's Mrazic and Campbell give up the same amount of goals. Mrazic looks terrible. So then maybe I'm I've got Camel's colored glasses on, or his terribleness doesn't stand out to me as much. I mean, or I it's just been a few it. days. We've just like been like, give us anything else. You know, it's a few days we've calmed down about Campbell. <laughs> oh yeah. My yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, and here's the other thing. How many two on ones did we have this game? Five? Uh 20 in the last like five minutes. Right. So it's like other teams are letting this happen, but the goalies make the saves. Would or Marner think, will pass it you, to no one. <laughs> would you think Razik or Campbell would save any of those? <laughs> yeah, maybe one or two. But no. like, <laughs> yeah, and like that's an old Anderson. Like, go get him. Oh, you know? Stop. Like <laughs> Dude, rant, rant, is their, rant is their backup. He's got a 918. Really? Yeah. Yeah. But that's yeah, that's and just cool. Anderson has like a 925. Yeah, hey, it's okay. Um but uh what do you what are your thoughts on because I know this is a big thing on like Luke's Twitter on uh Timothy Lilligren. I wonder if we're gonna have similar thoughts. His ceiling is really high, his floor is really low when it comes to like just game to game, which just tells me that like big mistakes you'll fix, right? Like mm-hmm. big mis- big think about Riley. 
Like yeah. Riley used to make huge mistakes and he's, he's fixed those. So if your peak is very high, like when you look good, you look amazing. I, I worry a lot less than someone like Dermot who mm-hmm. did Dermot, has Dermot ever done anything good. Like really amazing. Right. When you see Logan, you're like, Oh shit. That's why he was a first round pick. Yeah. Right. His mistakes are very big. And I think some people give him a little bit more lenience, but like, these are going to happen. We don't know, we, dude. We don't know what developing a defenseman even looks like. I know. Yeah. We draft. We took Riley fifth. Who? And then if you look back at that draft, we should have would have gone first overall. So our first overall twenty like draft defensive draft pick was good by the time he was Lilligren's age. Yeah. Actually, I mean, what, like when when was his first real breakout year? Was that um, right? What was it, Morgan Riley's even first breakout year? Like, how old was he? Uh, I think probably, probably around, probably around Lily's age. Yeah. No, uh, Lily got into points. League. Morgan got into the league, like, pretty much right at the start of his career. No, I know. I'm saying he was about – he was 21, 22 uh, okay. when he had yeah. his first over 30-point, like, right. season. Yeah, and Lilligren's 50, never – probably never 52 at, points. But that's not what he's there L- for. Lilligren won't get 30 points. Do you know how many points that guy has? No. Uh, Lilligren has 15 points in 42 games. He's on pace for 29. Hmm. Yeah, no, he, he's just he, not. He's not like he's not he's in power not, play. He's not. He's like, just in the play. Yeah, he's a two-way defenseman. Yeah, yeah, and he'll, he'll be. The he'll be fine. The, the thing is, he might not like. He might not be the answer right now. Right, and you're thrusting him into a That's role fine. on the top defensive pair with Morgan Riley, who's not the best defensively, and you're being like, "Hey, it's your rookie season. Like, go play against top lines and get." Yeah. bunch of minutes now um and then you're gonna make a couple mistakes a game now granted in the playoffs but, you can't get away with doing that but all of his heat maps all of his analytics the guy looks awesome Keith, but it's just Keith like he makes not big... getting mad at Lilligren when he makes those plays no right? like maybe on the ice when but then you know he comes back oh he says he tell, must tell him before the game like dude you're on the top line you're 21 years old this is your 60th 50th nhl game or like 60th nhl game it's fine right? You'll make those mistakes, right? Like Riley eventually learned, you know, when he used to pinch too early or he used to fucking jump up on the rush in stupid uh, ways. I don't think he's done that all year. Mm-hmm. And yeah, granted he's 27, 28 now, but like he's obviously grown from that. So defensemen take a while, right? You know, people fucking uh, are riding uh, Niamello so hard. Like that's going to be his development. That's what it's going to yeah. look like. Especially because he's so offensive, like Sandy, yeah. right? Put Sandy in that top role. The guy gave up essentially three goals the one game. And yeah. then he just didn't play since <laughs> until tonight. Um, yeah. But, yeah, like, the question is, is when the playoffs come and Muzzin is back, and let's say we – let's not even say we get a defense. We're, We're getting a top four defense. Okay. We're going to. So two yeah. guys. Who are the two guys that come out of the lineup? Uh, well, it's Riley, Brody, Muzzin. Top guy. Muzzin, other Dan guy. Dean, Labushkin. Labushkin, done. Right. So Lilligren is thing your is extra too, Lil, defense. Yeah, Lilligren's not going to be mad at that. <laughs> no. Also, and the guy's playing the minors his whole his whole like career. Like he does like he's not this isn't stunting his growth. This is just not not giving him an opportunity, right? So you think now I know what we think, but you think that um Keith will take out Hall and put in Sandine? Yes. You think that Keith will do that? Yeah. I find I, I don't know. I find that I hope so, because I think all of us in Leafland. But if he doesn't, he he loves attaching Hall to Muzzin. So if you get a guy that's going to replace that spot yeah. with Muzzin, then I think that's more of a chance. Yeah, and where you're coming from. Yeah, let, let's. Uh, I like he keeps Simmons in there, and Hall and Lilligren as your extra defense. Like we had Ben Hutton as our extra. Like that's a good. I think yeah. Dermot will be traded away no matter what, kind of for cap stuff. Someone um, will get hurt too. Well, exactly, and probably it will be Muzzin. Um, so, oh no, yeah, oh sure, sorry, I miss uh, misspoke. Muzzin will be hurt. Yeah, <laughs> Muzzin will be hurt. Exactly. Muzzin will, Muzzin yeah. will be hurt. <laughs> um, is there anything like in terms of our forward group other than Simmons that you're kind of like? Are you concerned about Willie right now? Uh, I think I'm more concerned about Tavares. Yeah, but I think Tavares, like, but the thing is maybe not concerned because like i just don't think he can be as elite as he usually is i think when his right. floor his floor is pretty high his ceiling he's just not going to be that guy right which is okay but you know then i almost think 
And that's what, uh, like Nylander doesn't even need to be on that line then. Right. Right. Like he could go play on his own line, but I know our lines are pretty well set anyways, but then I think that's Robertson fits better with that fucking line. Way better. I agree. Nealon and Robertson were getting some good chemistry. Yeah. And with that amount of speed, and I'm not saying Cash is, a, but like Cash at Kerfoot Spezza as a fourth line is, that's a. And like if good they're playing well, you give them more minutes. And if they're playing bad, they're, yeah. It's, it, we talk as if, oh, they're not going to get minutes. Oh, wait, we've never seen one of our lines play bad. Mm hmm. Right, like of course, at the start of the game, if everything were to be what it looks like on paper, that fourth line may get the least amount of minutes. But yeah. if the third line sucking, or the second line sucking, or the first line sucking, they will get more minutes. Yeah, right? they'll get their minutes. Also, yeah. is that a bad thing that your fourth line, who's that's objectively quite good, not getting minutes? Tampa's fourth line probably didn't get minutes. They were good. Well, and the other thing too is like with Kasha, you want him to stay healthy for an entire playoffs if we do make it to the cup and i only so, like, wanted to play nine him, and a half minutes yeah, <laughs> playing him 18 minutes is just like recipe for wily disaster. coyote go get him go get him go 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 <laughs> yeah uh, on the bench. <laughs> so yeah i uh i really liked robertson up there once again i, I don't know if you were on i think it was just mark and i talking but like it's hard just as a fan to watch in the defensive zone and pay attention to single players we're not scouts right but like I haven't seen too much from Robertson, but I haven't also been looking. So like maybe he isn't as defensively, and that's why Kerfer has been put into that role at the end of yeah. games. But like from my eye test, anyways, he's not making any big mistakes. And when he does make mistakes, remember the one play he gave it away, and then he hustled. It was like yeah, uh, yeah. DK Metcalf coming back. DK again, Metcalf, Buda, yeah, yeah. Buda Baker. Um, like that's the kind of you just know that he's always the last guy off. I just I really want to see him in the playoffs and. I'd rather have like what's our brainer issue in the playoffs the last few years? Uh, we Scoring score. goals. Yeah. yeah. So who's going to help you score goals? Simmons or Robertson? <laughs> exactly. So play Robertson. <laughs> you know that's <laughs> <laughs> that's my. Wayne thoughts. Simmons ain't scoring you shit. Yeah, especially I, because I let's guy. be realistic. Again, I want him as my thirteenth forward. Yeah. Exactly. If yeah. anyone's out, or if we need, I hate the fucking if we need him in there. Like, we don't need him in there because they don't play him like that, anyways. Or right, like, and hey, I mean, recently, Pierre Engvall has been I love getting Pierre his Engvall. helmet taken off every game and like punching I've, guys. I've in been the saying face. it. I've been on the Engvall hype train for like two months now. Yeah, since uh, we're gonna have to go back in our old podcast and dig up all the shit we were talking about that guy, but like, um. <laughs> He's he's been like it's like uh, what Kasperi Kapanen. Um, he started off his career not doing much in terms of like being a rat or anything, and then he started yeah. to like really like stick guys and do be like yeah. a bit of a Michael Bunting. And now I feel like Engball is stepping into that role, probably because he's realizing now like this is my role. Like I this can is my role. Up. Yeah, and like that gives you the opportunity. The guys, what six five is next a whole feet by itself, yeah. like. Oh yeah, then I carry the one. I think it's seven foot five. <laughs> so no, like he's he, six foot five. He has the possibility to do that. And you see Mikheyev at the end there after the bunting, a little scrum. A little, a little scrappy, dude. I, I'm looking right now. He had 10 penalty minutes. Yeah. <laughs> On next, I guess. Bunting just... 12 penalty minutes. Marner, Marner, nice minus three. Yeah. Mm. Um, last thing we'll get to is Ooh, how Mrazic's Mrazic's save percentage better than usual 892 oh wow that's amazing nice job that's that actually you know what's funny that puts his career save percentage or his uh, season save percentage up uh, yeah 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 but yeah. once you hit rock bottom is only up uh his goals against goes up unfortunately <laughs> what do you think of the matthews cross check what do you think results out of it and how do you feel about him doing it it might be a game because the thing is I can't decide if it's a, it's it's a game because it's Matthews or it's not a game because it's Matthews. Right. If it's any other Leaf, they get a game, but they they if there's going to be one biased for the Leafs, it'll be anything Austin Matthews does. Yeah. All right. They yeah. don't want him not playing games. I and I. He shouldn't I, have done that. <laughs> he shouldn't have done that. I understand the frustration, especially compiled from our the, the previous heartbreaking way we lost. 
and the fact that John Tavares once again just gets tripped and there's no call, and then yeah. a minute later the Buffalo Sabres score. Like it's just also Del- I don't know what Deline was. Well, actually, I know what Deline was doing. He was doing exactly what he want, what he meant to do, right? Like he wanted to piss off Matthews. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, he's cross checking him into his own net, like. And granted, that's what the playoffs is going to be like. And Austin, do exactly what you did. Just don't cross check him in the neck. You know, like you're a big yeah, dude. Yeah. No one's going to push you around. Like you can take Dallin no. easy. You know, if you want to yeah. wrestle him to the ground, do it. Take like, you know, but don't cross check. Don't cadre someone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Um, yeah. But when it uh, when it comes to refing, that is the one thing that recently I just have hardly been able. It's what pisses me off. More it's so annoying too, because like you tweet and you say the refing is shit, and people are like, "Oh, like classic Leafs blaming the refs." I'm like, "No, in general, it's yeah. bad. Yeah, like, not for against the Leafs. It's bad for both." We also have the worst. Uh, we have the least amount of penalties drawn in the entire NHL for being Did one you of see the fastest. Jeff Yates tweet. It, Jeff Yates tweets like the last six years. It's like thirty second, 29th, thirtieth, twenty fifth, twenty sixth, and the Avalanche. First five years in a row. Yeah. That, people will say it's because they're a fast team, but yeah, we definitely don't have a fast team yeah. at all. Like, it just doesn't... The Matthews doesn't, one should tell you enough, where he's like, I would love to look for ice time. The average ice time penalty drawn. I mean, I could just do the math. But I'm sure he'd be fucking dead last. Yeah. Oh, it, right? Because I know he's already, like, in the bottom quarter, and my guess is there's players that don't play much that are there but yeah yeah and the playoffs is just going to get worse and worse so like that's why it's nice to see matthews do something you know anything and it's Wait, nice for fun what are we what are we in penalties uh take it because it, you know most it the most, one the for big, one thing yeah the, that's yeah. the thing if we're low on that too then that just goes back to the parody thing rather than just against the leafs it just means the refing yeah. in general is if, stupid. If any of our watchers want to look into that, I'll look into it too. But like, it'd be interesting to see where the Avalanche were first, if they're close in that, or you know what we are, how yeah. much parity there is involved. But like the last few games, it hasn't been equal. We didn't draw one penalty no. against the Arizona Coyotes. Like, yeah, that, that doesn't make like sense. Seven. Yeah, that doesn't yeah. make sense. Um, had like forty shots. Who do we play shots. next? Are we done with the bad teams? It's probably for the best. <laughs> you called it, man. You said we wouldn't win many games uh, going. I called it. Yes, yeah. I think we still have, like Vancouver. No, we have. Oh no, we're done with the bad teams. We have Dallas. Dallas. Okay, and Dallas is Dallas, up. Carolina, Nashville. So now we're going on a win streak. Oh yeah, man. <laughs> then back to the back to the Devils and Canadians. Oh, back to the losing streak, and then Panthers. So, uh, your bold prediction. Do you think this is Mirazik's? This was Mirazik's last game as a Leaf. Um, I'm looking for a back to back. <laughs> so our next back to back. We actually Campbell's still out. That next. would mean that Calgren would have to start though. So in two weeks, two weeks today is our next back to back, and we actually have like two and like three days in between. And even right, but days. Campbell's still hurt. So like, it's either Calgren starting. It, well, no. What I'm saying is, could he be back in two weeks? Oh. Right? Are you re- like unless you have the guy to go grab right now, you're not just waving Raz. Deadline is Campbell's before, not back. It's right? before our next back to back. So you wouldn't you wouldn't wave you. I don't even know when you'd wait. You, you wouldn't wave Mrazek until Campbell's at least okay and Calgary's not shit. Right. Which like, <laughs> although if you needed cap space, you would. Yeah. Because yeah, okay, especially- here's the thing: Why would you waive 3.2 million that you're going to get free, but after the trade deadline? Fair. Well, yeah, my thing is like, then you're banking, or you do it right this fucking second. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. I think that uh, either this was his last game, or he's going to have one more game as a Leaf, and then I think he. I really stuck. don't want to have to attach like a fucking second round pick to get rid of this contract. No, and that's why you put him. Honestly, you might Either you save, you maybe even have to give up more. Holy fuck. I don't know. I don't think teams are going to do them any favors, but I think no. you're not getting absolutely anything for him, which is why I think waivers no. is just someone will pick him up. 
you know, yeah. but he's not going to get better as a leaf. I think his confidence and probably him and the team probably don't see uh, each other in the best light anymore. Um, mm. We've seen that with many leaf goalies throughout the past 10 years. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, I think that this guy is done. I, and, yeah. He never gave us hope once. No, no, I don't count one game. Hope is two games in a row. <laughs> hope is two games, two games total. Yeah. Yeah. Two games total. <laughs> yeah, two games total. <laughs> yeah. Um, all suck. right. That's it for us. Us Now we're going to have a podcast out tomorrow. We're going to be going a little bit more in depth because the trade deadline's coming up. Um, so we'll go more on trade targets. We'll each have a couple uh, defense that we should, could go after and maybe a couple goalies that we can discuss. Um, but yeah, And if as- you've gotten this far, you get a stat break. These are the last eight, eight games, how many goals we've given up. Four, five, four, four, six, five, three, seven. That's your stat break. Mm-hmm. And every outshot every single one of those teams. You know what? We didn't outshoot tonight. Buffalo shot with like a oh, second left. Oh, <laughs> nice. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Nah. Right on. Actually, I mean, I guess we didn't watch the last fucking minute of the game, yeah, did we? True. <laughs> true. <laughs> oh, either way, we suck. <laughs> All right. We'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs>